All right, let's talk a little bit about um, amateur radio news this week. I saw that the um, Yesu just announced that they are discontinuing two radios, the FTDX 3000 and its big brother, the FTDX 5000. I'm glad we got and, ours while we still could. Oh, I know. I've got the FTDX 3000 on the, on the desk here, and I love it. Um, and the you know, the five thousand is was the you know the step up from that. Uh, they they said that um, the reason they're discontinuing the radios is due to parts availability, and they didn't really go into specifics. But um, back in October of twenty twenty, the um, a company by the name of AKM. Asahi Kasai Microsystems in Japan uh, issued a press release that a fire broke out in their no Nobuka semiconductor plant. And um, that factory produces large scale integrated circuits used in audio equipment, home appliances. They make um, TX XO oscillators, which is thermally um, compensated crystal oscillators and other products. And uh, because of the fire, you know, AKM has been forced to stop production and has, and delays are to be expected. And basically, they're saying that this this factory that produce you know they produce some um, digital analog converters and um, crystal oscillators and things like that. It's going to be out of it's going to be out of business for six to twelve months. And, I think this uh, is the same fire that caused Kenwood to uh, discontinue the THD seventy four. Yes, it is. They, um, yep, the, the discontinuance of that of the Kenwood handheld is also attributed to the fire at this semiconductor plant. And it done, not only is affecting the radio industry too, but um, camera manufacturers, um, Nikon, Canon, and Sony have announced uh, limited avail availability of some of their products. So it's, um, these um, semiconductors are found in a lot of things. Auto manufacturers, are, for, are being forced to uh, reduce production. I was just doing a little bit of Googling today and both Ford, GM, and um, you know, I, I, I can't remember, there was one, there was one import too that um, you know, said that they were gonna have to reduce, you know, uh, just slow down production uh, because of these, the shortage of these semiconductors. But, um, so it's, it's rippling throughout the, you know, the electronics world. And yeah, I think Patrick also commented there, ICOM's new ID52 is delayed probably because of it. Oh, okay. So if you're hoping for a new ICOM with D-Star, you're going to wait a while. Yeah. And I know ICOM hasn't announced any, you know, discontinuing any product yet. But um, I'm wondering, uh, because the, you know, you look at the age that the, F, the, the, the three, FTDX 3000 was introduced in 2012, and the 5000 was introduced in 2009. So they've been around for a while. I'm wondering if maybe the um, FT or not, the IC7200 uh, could, you know, or is it the 7100, the one that's got the touch screen? Um, I think 7300? No, no, not the, not, no, not the, not, not the one with the, um, with the SDR. Oh, 5100. They're, they're, no, they're mobile one. They're mobile HF rig. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the 7200. So uh, I wonder, I'm wondering, you know, that one, that one's been out for a few years, if that would, um, you know, if we may see some an announcement on that in the future. So just a little bit of speculation there, but um, Yesu's hurting. I mean, they, Yesu uh, discontinued the uh, FT450 last summer and um, the FTDX1200, and both of those rigs weren't attributed to this fire. But um, I think those, those parts availability issues were more, just general COVID related, but um, right, and they re they rebranded the eight seventeen as the eight eighteen with some new yeah. parts. But I think the eight eighteen eight seventeen that's a separate beast all on its own. I mean, the the radio is twenty years old. Um, it's now this is the third revision of it. Those eight seventeen eight seventeen ND now mm -hmm. the eight eighteen ND, um, but it's got such a following not just as a qrp receiver uh transceiver but it's used as an if rig for microwave uh for low band uh 630 2200 um and all sorts of things so it's it's still got a good niche market so they decided to upgrade it versus discontinuing it 
Whereas, whereas now the 3,000 and the 5,000, they're basically being replaced with the um, the 101, mm -hmm. now the FTDX10. Yep. So maybe they felt safer, Yesu felt safer that with the new models coming out, that this would be the impetus to yeah, retire retire these two rigs, which are they? they I, I will admit that that is a little bit long in the tooth. Um, twelve years for the FTDX five thousand is a long time, but still, after twelve years, its receiver is still king of the heap. Um, right. So, but uh, yeah. the three thousand uh, receiver is one of the best receivers I've ever heard. Yeah. And if you want to argue about it, I would say it's better than a seventy three hundred with SDR. But the also the um, FTDX ten, uh, Yesu just announced that it came in third in the Sherwood test re re results for for receiver sensitivity. So the, you know it's it's no slouch. Their mm -hmm. their hybrid SDR transceivers are definitely pretty hot stuff, and um, I think that's that maybe that's going to be the direction that the company is going to going to move in the in the future. So. Which, Eventually, all rigs are going to be SDR. There's yeah. no two two bets about it. Um, the the question is, is though, when does SDR surpass regular mechanical filters and DSP? Mm -hmm. And it's well, coming. It's it's coming. I, I don't think it's quite here yet. Um, digital is always going to be a little. Uh, below analog, I mm -hmm. say it's the same thing with records versus CD. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Definitely, we're you know definitely you know things like this with the um, with the plant closing down. You know we're going to see a lot of changes um, that are already on the way in the amateur radio marketplace with these with the new technologies. So it's and COVID ain't helping either. No, it's not. It's just it's just moving things faster. It's just moving things faster. So. But hey, if you get another um, amateur radio stimulus package coming up in the next month, <laughs> you know, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like that FDDX ten, but um, I'm still loving my three thousand, and I there's a I you know it's so that you know so what if your radio is discontinued? So what? I mean, parts will that generally be available for it for some time to come. I think the parts that they're finding um, unavailable are typically the ones that don't fail. You know, we're talking about semiconductors and, os and, and, and oscillators. And those things are pretty, you know, they, they'll last forever. It's not like a capacitor that's going to dry out or it's going to be a transistor that's going to blow or, um, you know, or power amp or something. Yeah, yeah, something like, something like that. So, um yeah, use it. Use it in good health, and um, you're going to still get a lot of, you know, even, you know, a lot of life out of it. And it's still a, it's still a contender out there on, the, on, on the bands. And um, yeah, Clay says, glad I got my three thousand when I did. So I wanted the larger rig in the shack, and the, three, you know, the three thousand fit the bill. And that's the three thousand is a big boy radio. Yeah, that's my set sentiments exactly. I like the, I like the buttons and knobs on it. I like the ability that. Um, you know, when I'm tuning in to our local HF um, Aries Racies net, I can isolate the noise, the background noise, and I can kill the, you know, pull up those weak signals and um, kill the interference. And um, it's just, it's just easy to do with a radio like that. So. Right. It's it's on the same uh, plane as the Ace Result FT1000 Mark V. Mm -hmm. Those are another radio that is strictly audio with or analog with DSP. But yeah. it's just a phenomenal build. Yep. And yep. Uh, I've noticed with my 3000, I can just change the bandwidth, the receive bandwidth, and all the noise goes away. It's just amazing. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you have any questions or comments? Well, please leave them in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, you know, maybe yours will end up in our next Your Questions Answered live stream. For more articles and information, though, please check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbrantennas. 
Also, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, especially if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.